This video's a little different. Ooh -hoo. What's shaking bacon? Today we'll be laying out the what, where, and how of buying whole pieces of meat to cut at home. And I'll be sharing my picks for the easiest pieces of meat to cut for beginners in each major category. Let's get started. When you walk into the meat department of your local grocery store, you will generally have three to four fresh meat categories to choose from. Poultry, beef, pork, and lamb. The variety of options can get a little overwhelming, so I'm hoping this video makes the shopping process a little simpler for you. When we're going out to buy meat to cut at home, we are looking to buy what are called subprimals. Subprimals are the whole versions of the steaks, chops, roasts, etc. that you see at the store. For example, a New York strip comes from a strip loin, which is a subprimal, and a lamb loin chop comes from a short loin, which is a subprimal. You start with the whole animal, which is first broken down into large pieces called primals. These primals are then divided further into subprimal cuts. And these are the pieces that are being sent out to grocery and big box stores for their meat cutters to then cut into their final forms. There are three major things to consider when deciding which whole subprimal to buy. One, what are your personal eating and cooking preferences? Two, what is your end goal? Are you looking to have a variety of cuts to choose from or do you have a recipe or cooking method in mind? And three, can that piece be cut into portions using only a knife? To go a little bit more in depth on each of these, I feel like number one is pretty self-explanatory. Just think about the types of meat that you like to eat and cook. It's easiest to start with something familiar. And keep in mind that subprimals can be quite large, so you will most likely be eating this piece of meat multiple times over. Number two, if you have a specific goal in mind, like a recipe or a cooking method, this will provide some direction on what pieces of meat are best suited for your intended application. Certain cuts benefit greatly from longer cooking methods, so that the fat and connective tissue in that meat can really break down, resulting in something very tender. Whereas other cuts benefit from quicker cooking methods like searing or sauteing, where the fast cook helps retain the moisture in that piece, whereas a longer cooking time would result in a drier piece of meat. If you're interested in seeing a video where we go in depth on different pieces of meat and their recommended cooking methods, let us know in the comments. Or do you want a variety of cuts to choose from? Then a subprimal with a bunch of different steak, chop, and roast options would be perfect for you. The best thing about cutting your own meat at home is that you can cut that piece into whatever you need or want. Is that a thin pork chop? Is it a thick pork chop? Is it strips for stir fry or chunks for kebabs? It's up to you. And finally, number three is the most important. Can the piece of meat that you want to buy be cut using only a knife? I don't know about you, but I don't have a bandsaw just chilling in my kitchen, ready to saw through bones to cut things like porterhouse steaks. The path of least resistance is to go for pieces that are already boneless. A couple of the many examples are strip loins or top sirloins in beef or boneless pork loins. You can still buy bone in meats, you just have to make sure that you can either remove the bones without impacting the integrity of the whole piece or that there's space in between the bones to slice through with a knife. My favorite example of a bone in subprimal that I love to cut at home is a beef rib. We do have a video on that where we go over how to cut steaks and roasts and ribs that I'll make sure to link below. It is the perfect example of a bone in subprimal that can be boned out with minimal impact to the rest of the meat and you can cut in between the bones with a knife for bone-in steaks. This does give me a possible video idea where we go through the primals and subprimals of each animal and discuss whether or not they can be cut up at home. If that sounds interesting to you, let us know in the comments. Next, I'd like to share some shopping tips with you. Firstly, if you can shop at a warehouse club store like Sam's Club or Costco, they tend to have whole pieces of beef, pork, chicken, and lamb available for you to buy directly on the sales floor. And the prices are usually cheaper per pound at stores like this. If you cannot or don't shop at places like this, then as long as your grocery store cuts meat on the premises, then you can go up to the meat counter and ask for a whole piece still in the cryovac. Asking for it still in the cryovac packaging is really important because that's how it comes into the store. And this specific packaging keeps all of the oxygen away from the meat, keeping it fresher for longer. And once it's broken, the oxygen gets in and the meat starts to degrade faster. This is a big reason why I'm such a big fan of vacuum sealing everything for long-term storage and not only things for the fridge and freezer, but I will also vacuum seal pantry items sometimes. 
My next tip is don't be afraid to ask a worker in the meat department for what you are looking for. That being said, please know what you are looking for. There can be multiple names for one piece of meat and the name that you know may not be the one that they know. I had somebody ask me for chopped meat once and I had no idea what they were talking about. I did learn a new name for ground beef that day though. <laughs> a vague description of what you're looking for is also not particularly helpful. I had a customer ask me once for lamb chops and when I asked her which kind she was looking for because we sold four different kinds, she responded with the ones you fry but it is very difficult to help you if you don't know what you're looking for. So do a quick Google search first. You can even go up and show them a picture. Help them help you. Additionally, don't be afraid to ask for more than one option to choose from. If they have the stock, they can bring you out two beef tenderloins to choose between. And it's totally okay to say that you're gonna pass on whatever it is. I went to my local meat counter and asked for a strip loin and he brought me out the saddest little skinny strip loin I have ever seen. And I had to tell him, thank you, but no thank you. It's really not that big of a deal. They're just gonna put that piece back in the box that it came out of. My last tip is to keep an eye on the sales ads for your local grocery stores. In my experience, meat tends to go on a sale rotation. So sometimes you can anticipate what will be going on sale. A good place to start is noticing what goes on sale around the big holidays because these tend to be consistent year to year. Fancier cuts like beef ribs, beef tenderloins, lamb roasts, all tend to go on sale for each major holiday but the sales will vary from holiday to holiday. So for example, if a beef rib is on an amazing $4.99 a pound sale for Christmas, it might not be on that good of a sale for say 4th of July. It might be $8.99 a pound instead. Still on sale, but it's different. Generally speaking, when the steak chop or roast version is on sale, then so is the whole subprimal that they were cut from. Not always, but a lot of the time. And sometimes that sale is even better than the sale on the cut versions. And if it's unclear by the sales ad or the signs, just ask someone who works there and they'll be able to find out the price of a whole subprimal for you. Also, when one cut of meat is on sale, then usually everything else that comes from the same area of the animal will also be on sale. For example, at my old job, when top round London broils were on sale, then so were top round steaks, round chunks, and round for stir fry. Everything we fabricated from a whole top round would go on sale at the same time. Oh, I lied, one more thing. Before you buy anything, make sure you have the storage space in your fridge or freezer to accommodate this amount of meat and or a plan to use it. We're here to save money and eat better and we can't do that if there's nowhere to store the food. We've covered what considerations need to be made when deciding which subprimal to buy and now you know all of my tips for the actual shopping process. Now I'm going to go through each major meat category and tell you which, in my opinion, are the easiest subprimals from each of them to cut. Starting with poultry, we're going with the reigning king of birds, the chicken. Why is chicken the easiest type of poultry to cut at home? I'm so glad you asked. Not only is it the most readily available poultry option, but once you know how to break down a whole chicken, you know how to break down any and all poultry. I'd recommend starting with chicken because their small size makes them easier to handle. Breaking down a whole chicken is fundamentally the same as breaking down a whole turkey, but turkeys are bigger and their bones are stronger, overall making it more challenging. Chicken is the one type of meat I believe everyone should know how to cut, and where I recommend everyone starts when learning how to cut meat. Moving on to beef, eye rounds are the easiest to cut. They're probably the easiest piece of meat to cut, period and this is due to it being a literal log of meat. Eye rounds are boneless, pretty easy to find, and incredibly simple. They have a fat cap on one side and the grain runs in all the same direction. So you can just cut across all the way down and call yourself a butcher. For pork, I'm going with the piece of meat that kept Xavier and I fed on a budget for a bunch of college and beyond. And I'm talking about the boneless pork loin. It's easy to cut for pretty much all of the same reasons that an eye round is. They are also boneless, as the name suggests, and even easier to find than an eye round because a lot of stores will just put whole boneless pork loins out on the sales floor for you to buy, whereas you're probably going to need to ask somebody at the meat counter to get you an eye round. We're dealing with another log of meat, so same idea, you can just cut across that log all the way down and you're good. 
We do have in-depth butchery videos for all of these and I will make sure to link them below for you. And finally, lamb. Most lamb options do need to be cut on a bandsaw, but lucky for me, my favorite can be cut using only a knife. And I'm talking about a rack of lamb or lamb ribs. The ones that I got are Frenched, which just means that the meat, cartilage, and fat around the bone is removed. This is done so that they look pretty. It's purely aesthetic, not necessary, but it's also the only option they had at the store. To cut them, all you need to do is flip them over so that the bones are facing up, follow the spaces between the bones down to where the meat is, and then slice in between where the bones meet. And there you have lamb rib chops. The best part about cutting these at home, besides the savings, is that you get to choose whether you want single or double bone lamb chops. And why stop at double? It's your world and we're just living in it. There you have it, the what, where, and how to buy meat for cutting at home. I've linked all of the videos I mentioned today down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you did, please leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe for more bartending and butchery content. And until next time. Oh, uh, do I need to clean my glasses? Need to. What, where, and how? What, where, how? Ow, I just smacked my knee on the table. Double bone lamb chomps. Chomps. Lamb chomps. I think. Oh, my water! I'm a very verbose human being. Wow. I'm kicking ass. That was pretty damn good. Even with this table down all the way so I can sit at it, I'm sitting on a pillow to be like a good enough height, and my feet are on a step stool because on the pillow and sitting up straight, my feet don't touch the ground. I wanted to be 5'5. That did not happen.